installing code blocks so if you go to your browser and try to search for code blocks and then this is the first link that you will get and it will redirect you to codeblocks.org and codeblocks is an IDE that will help us to write programs especially for C, C++ and Fortran IDE. The good thing about codeblocks is it is a cross-platform and open source meaning we can use it freely to develop our C programs. So the first thing that we're going to need guys is to download this of course in order for us to install and start writing our C programs. So there are two options here. We can download it from this link and of course we can also download it from this particular uh, link here. So let's just try this one, the upper one, and then there are options to download the binary release. We can download the source code and we can also retrieve source code from SVN. Okay. The first thing that we're going to need now is to download the binary release. Okay. You'd click on that. And here we can see that we can install it on Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. And we can install it also in Linux operating system, be it 32 or 64 bit. And also we can use it on Mac. OS X and because we're using Windows operating system for now so let's just click on that and then here we can see all the options or all the links that we can download the uh, code blocks we can download only the setup we can only or we can also download the NAN admin no setup and then we can also code blocks with this Ming W setup so if you want, you can download this particular one, code blocks, and then the current version is 17.12 mingw-setup.exesa. And then we can download it from SourceForge or FossHub. So try that. And then let's just wait for the download to complete in order for us to install this particular IDE. And then after installation, of course, we can write our first program in C programming language. So currently it is 86.2 MB and then we're just going to wait for a few seconds for the download to complete and I think it won't take that much time and we're halfway there. There you go. So we can just install this particular IDE. So click on this. And yes, next, I agree, and then we don't want to touch anything here. If you are an advanced user, you can try to modify the installation, but for now, since we're uh, beginners, let's try to click on next and then install. This is the destination folder, and then install. So there you go, installation is complete. So do you want to run code blocks now? Of course, yes. So GNU's GCC compiler has been detected, so that's okay. And file associations, we are being asked here if we want to associate C and C++ files for this particular IDE. So uh, yes, associate code blocks with C or C++ files and then OK. So there you have it. We now have the installation of code blocks. So here we have the basic basic program or basic C program. Okay. And before that, we or I'm going to show you how to create project here in code blocks uh, IDE. So the first thing that we're going to need is to create a project. So instead of using this particular um, file test.c, we're going to close that and then create our new project. So let's go to file and then new and then 
there's an option here for creating our project so basically all we have to do is uh, select here the type of application that we want so, so for example we're going to just create a basic application or basic say program so let's try to find that here in this options so we're going to select the first one which is the console application because uh, we're going to start with a very basic application so go and then next so it should be C project title will be programming knowledge tutorials and then let's just uh, select the actual directory to you uh, directory to use so let's just say the documents and then we're going to um, create a new file here or a new directory C projects and then okay and then next and then we don't want to mess around here so just basically finish the wizard for now so finish so we have here our project uh, programming knowledge tutorials and we have here the sources and by default uh, it created this particular file main.c so as you can see we have here some parts or pre-populated code for us so we have the very basic structure of a basic C application so if you try to run this let's just uh, let's just try to run this first before we go any further with our tutorial so let's just run and then it it, uh, it will ask to build our project so of course yes and then there you go you can see here uh, the hello world text so basically what this program is doing is just printing hello world string or text into our uh, monitor or this particular console so uh, press any key to continue or you can just close this particular uh, command prompt okay so uh, let's uh, if you want to make the text or the code bigger you can just control scroll by using your keyboard and your mouse of course so I'm just going to make it bigger so that you will uh, you will be able to see what I'm what I am doing here with our project so first I'm going to discuss first the parts of this particular program or basic program uh, C so basically we have the lines uh, 1 and 2 so basically it is the like import statement of this particular program so it, it is basically uh, saying that we need these files and we need to include this in our new program or new file uh, main.c so we have here the uh, include and then stdio.h and include stdlib.h uh, so basically these are header files okay so these are files and we need uh, functions from those files so, so for example we have here the functions printf here so this particular function is inside or can be found in stdio.h file okay and here we also have the uh, int main as you can see here so the int main is the main function this is the entry point of every program in C language so in normal terms it, it is basically the entrance and every time we run our project it will try to find the main function of our uh, pro project so it should have like one main function for in, in order for us to run our project uh, program so int main so basically it says that the return type is an int and then everything uh, inside this curly braces open and co close curly braces is part of this particular function main and we have two lines here so print f and then uh, semicolon and then return 0 
and then semicolon. So these are the lines of our uh, in main function. So in order to terminate a line, you need to add semicolon at the end of that particular line. So just like this here, and of course, uh, just like uh, right after this return zero. So now I'm going to explain what this function does. So the printf is a function used to print data on the console. So basically, we're just selling our program to output hello world, and then um, it should return zero. So return zero statement, uh, it means that the return execution status of this particular program and the zero value is used for successful execution and one for unsuccessful execution. So let's try to run this again. Anyway, you can just uh, run or build and run your project or you can just uh, run it by pressing this particular run button. Okay. So as you can see here, we have this particular um, string or output hello world. And if we try to add a new line for our program, printf, and then uh, everything that we want to display, it should be inside the double quotes, okay? C programming is awesome, okay? And then, of course, we need to end this uh, end this particular line by adding the semicolon at the end. And then save. We can just build and run. So as you can see here, hello world and then C programming is awesome. So notice that we have added this particular character here, backslash n. So we're just telling the program to add another line or to go on to a new line after printing the hello world or the hello world uh, string this one and let's try this also for this particular second line and build and run okay so as you can see after uh, printing the C programming is awesome it added a new line here which you can see as a space between C programming awesome text and process return zero so uh, there are others uh, there are other texts or other keywords also for this instead of using um, slash or backslash n you can use backslash t for tab or for tabbing so let's try that save and then build and run so as you can see there is a significant space between programming word and the word is so this will come in handy if you're trying to work with like uh, tabular data so uh, backslash t will be uh, like very useful for you because it will format the columns for you and uh, as i've said it will be a great help